Mark, I want to welcome you to The Nursing Show. Uh, thanks for reaching out to me and sharing with me your, your amazing book, uh, The Pharaoh's Midwives. Um, it, it really is an interesting look at nursing practice from a completely different direction. Um, so thanks a lot. Oh, thank you, and, and thanks for having me on your show. I've seen some of your previous shows, and they're just they're w wonderful. They're excellent. They're, they're uh, perfect. I'm so glad that a nurse is using the Internet in such a way as you are. Well, thank you. Um, before we get into talking about the book, uh, why don't you share us a little bit about your background as a nurse and, and um, you know, sure. it, it's kind of where you came from. Well, I've, I've been a nurse now for almost three decades, over 30 years, and primarily uh, mental health, although right now I work on an outpatient clinic in primary care, and, and I'm in my uh, Master's of Nursing program. I hope to, I'll graduate with my nurse practitioner degree in about a year or two. And I want to own my own uh, uh, clinic. I want to manage my own clinic, and I want to focus on chronic care uh, and really try and help folks with diabetes and high blood pressure and overweight and smoking and those issues to really have a medical home where they can really address those issues. That's fantastic, and it's so exciting to hear you talk about that because I think that um, I'd li I, I hope and really wish that more nurses – considered going in that route and becoming um, that primary care, that medical home for people, because I think nurses offer a unique, a unique perspective um, for that. And, I, I agree with you completely. And it's, 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 I sometimes think that the perspective is so natural to us as nurses that we forget how unique it is in healthcare, that, that patient centered focus almost seems like it's a, it's another hand to us. But I think it, once we get out of ourselves and look at healthcare as non-nurses, we realize that it's just one of the most uh, unique perspectives in all of healthcare. It de it really is. It, it's, it, you wish you wish that the rest of the healthcare system would pick up on it and, and right right and run exactly. with it because exactly. it just exactly. it just makes sense. Um, at least it makes sense to us in the nursing field. Right, anyway. right. And I think that's a very good way to say it. It just makes sense. Um, so tell us why you decided to write this book. Uh, it's it's a fictional account of a story that you picked up out of Exodus in the, in the Old Testament of the Bible right, um, right. about nurse midwives that you right. found an account in there. Right. It is, it's a fascinating little section of the Bible, and, and it's just six or seven verses. And it, it's the, in the verses, it's the story of two midwives who are named. And whenever you're in the Bible, if you're named, you're very, very important. And they are commanded by Pharaoh to kill... Um, the Hebrew slaves, or in my book, I use a, 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 an older form of Hebrew called a piru, um, uh, and they are midwives to the piru, so they're helping women of lower status who are slaves to give birth. And Pharaoh comes to them and says, you know, every time you see a male child, we want you to kill it. We want you, and there's actually a whole process about how they would, the way they gave birth, that they would actually see the baby first before the mother would, and they could just put their hand over the baby's over the baby's face and hold it there for a few moments and actually kill the baby. So they decide not to do that. Uh, in the Bible, it says that they they feared God more than Pharaoh. And the word fear means is really is they're following their own ethical guidelines. They're following what they consider their profession uh, to tell them to do. And they risk a lot. And yet, in the last sentence of the book, they get by with it. And the, the, the sentence in the Bible, they get by with it. So the question in my mind was, how did they get by with it? What, not only what moved them to actually take this stand, but how did they get by with it? How were they so smart? And I think the, in writing the book, those actually um, focused on questions I have. How do I take ethical stands? How do I get by with it? You know, not, not without losing my job. How do I, how do I uh, oppose things that I, am, I think are wrong or advocate for things that are right? How do I use that? patient perspective to guide me. You know, and, and you really captured the whole essence of nursing practice in this book. Uh, you know, I urge everyone to, to check it out um, because it, it really oh, poses these ethical questions without pulling in any of the current political garbage that you can get wrapped up in um, when talking about some of these ethical concerns, but still deal with the, the idea of how can nurses address within themselves and within their workplace uh, some of these these conundrums. You know, and I, I think that's that's uh, that's a, just aptly put. 
And I, I actually ran into the idea of writing when I was reading uh, a nurse theorist, and and they were talking about the four ways of knowing, and one of the ways of knowing that is is aesthetic knowledge, and it's using the arts. Um, and I never thought of myself as a writer. I'm not a professional writer. I do most of my income is from nursing, but writing, you know, we all write care plans, we all write, you know, whatever. And so I figured I could write. I didn't think I could paint or write a song, and like nursing, writing is something you get better at by writing. You know, it's very hard to read about nursing and then say you're a nurse. You actually have to go on the floor, go in the clinic, and, and actually make the mistakes. And there was a lot of mistakes that I did. But making mistakes on a paper was so much easier to, you know, you just delete it and start all over again. Mm -hmm. And it became a, a wonderful experience for me to work out some of my own medical problems. When I read the book now, I can remember some of the things I was dealing with. How do I go to school? How do I pay for school? How do I, how do I tell this professor that what I think is going on is wrong? How do I deal with these people who don't have insurance? I mean, there were some real things that, that just kind of flowed out of my experience and went into the book that helped me deal with those questions. And so I think the fact that it, it really focuses in on the, the ethical dilemmas nursing faces, it, it was centered in on that those active problems. It was not something that happened 10 years ago I was writing about was something that happened at the time of writing. And I would frankly encourage any nurse who has a pen or a typewriter or a piece of chalk on a sidewalk to try it out. Because I, I think you don't have to be a best-selling novelist to get something out of writing. I just was crazy enough to spend the extra days to write and rewrite and take it out. And I mean, several people offered, several wonderful nurses read it and, and offered me critiques, some of which I didn't like hearing because, you know, it was critique. But in the end, it was an excellent book, and I, I, I appreciate what you said, and I hope everybody will enjoy it. Well, one of the things I like is that one of the ways they solved their, their dilemma, their ethical problem between what uh, the government or the powers that be were telling them to do and what they felt was their duty to their patients was coming back to a central core tenet of nursing, which is being an advocate for your patients yes, um, and, yes. and that, that one, yes. I guess, near the end of the book, you know, they, they, they advocate very strongly. I don't want to give it away. Oh, yeah. but they advocate very strongly I, for the Apiru and say, these people are of value. These people absolutely. have worth absolutely. and these people deserve better. Um, and, and ultimately, you know, that that's how they, they stand up for themselves. And, and I think that is, is a, a good observation, and I think that's an untapped reservoir of strength. Sometimes nurses think they're out there all by themselves, and reaching out to colleagues in a, in a real way, not just, you know, can you help me turn this patient, but how do we deal with these ethical dilemmas, and then reaching out to patients, especially trying to understand the world from the patient's point of view, is, is it's different than ours. It's, it's different. I mean, we, even though we spend so much time with the patient, we look at the patient as patients. They look at themselves as sick people or as people who are trying to get well. And they have tremendous capacities that I sometimes think that we, we miss. And if we can look at it from the point of view of them, uh, there's a coalition, I think, that could be formed. And certainly, a, 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 I think it just makes nursing more fun to learn about the world from somebody else's point of view. And it changes you and improves who you are. You know, I wonder if this isn't a great opportunity for, for this book to be used in, in, in a school setting for nurses, for student nurses especially, even at the undergraduate level, to, to help them understand some of these potential dilemmas they might face um, in, in a different sense. You know, we, have, we all have to take our ethics class or our, our section right. of our nursing right. training is, uh, that has ethical concerns in it. Um, this book would give an excellent way for them to identify with uh, a fictional character that is dealing with real life modern problems. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, it's available for anybody on Amazon or Barnes and Noble who wants to buy it because it's an ebook, but certainly. But actually, it's strange that you should mention that. Just last month, I, I gave a presentation to uh, 15 undergraduate nurses using this book as a central tenant and it had them writing. And we did not ask them to, to tell them what to write. We just asked them to write about an important clinical event. And every story had to deal with a, uh, uh, an ethical issue. And it became a, a fodder for some really excellent discussions. 
where an insight, you know, you, you know, sometimes when you're dealing with a patient and you teach them, you can see their light, you know, go on. Oh, that's how I do it. Oh, I can do that. These student nurses were having with after three hours in the in the in the workshop, they were doing that. And it was a, it was a pleasure to to see that. And it and frankly, if those 15 nurses that I was t had the privilege of teaching are at all like the 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 crop of young nurses that are coming on here, our profession is going to be blessed with with just un, uh, unlimited talent. I, I it was a it was a just a great, uh, great thing to see. Yeah, that, that speaks to the whole educational system that's that we're trying to expand nursing uh, numbers now right, and right. running into the issues of how do we put out good nurses at the same time we're putting out a, a larger number of nurses. Right. And I have to say, I, I think as a whole, the nursing profession is doing a good job of ramping up um, yes. Yes. This, this expansion of nursing education because they're not just throwing, you know, I, I call it throwing mud on the wall and seeing what sticks. Right. They're really still maintaining a very tight control over the quality of the nurse they're turning out. Right. And, and you're, you're prime, you just, gave a prime example of that. Uh, yeah, no, I believe that too, Jamie. That's a good observation. So what's next? Are you going to write another book? Is there a follow-up? I, I, uh, yes, I'm actually writing a book about Walt Whitman going to war. Uh, Excellent. You know, many of you, most people know that Walt Whitman was uh, acted as a nurse now, and um, nursing, there was no licensing, you know, back right. in, in 1860, but he changed dressings. He visited, visited people in the hospital he, and he wrote a journal about what it was like to go to war and the war changed him. And, and I like to say that the nursing that he did during the war changed him because he was a bit of a drunkard and a sloth in before the war and afterwards the war made tremendous changes to his poetry. And I've just been curious about that transition. How did the work of nursing change that man? who was frankly living a fairly decent life before the war and didn't need to go to war and, and was fairly comfortable. How did that change him? And um, he writes some poetry about nursing, and I'm not a big poet. I'm not a, I want to be real clear. I'm not, a, I'm not a, an English major. And sometimes I have to read his poetry second, two, three times. But there's a real poignancy about it, even though it's 150 years old, that speaks to me now. And so I've, I've been writing some stories about that as well. And I hope to publish something in a year. Excellent. Well, we'll definitely have to keep our eyes open for that. And you're, of course, welcome to come back on the show. Well, that, and... This has been an excellent, uh, it's been an excellent experience. I'm so glad that you're doing this. This is, this is high quality uh, information that you put out there. And, and it, it looks like it's, it's, you know, it's just so simple. I, it's such a simple idea. I didn't know any, why somebody wasn't doing it before you do it. And I'm so glad you're doing it, though. Well, I, I try. Thank you very much. That's humbling. I, you know, my, my whole goal is to just do what I can to help nurses stay up to date in news and, and information and, and to, to pose questions. And, and, and maybe I don't have all the answers. Maybe sometimes I have the wrong answers. But um, I, I hope to stimulate discussion and create a sense of community where that discussion can be borne out. And Thank you. so far, in the last six or seven years, that's, um, that's uh, been successful so Good. far. Good. That's inspiring. That's inspiring. Can I put well, in a, sh a shameful plug? Absolutely. No, that's what you're here book, for. The book's name is Pharaoh's Midwives, a retelling of the nurse midwives in Exodus. It's by Mark Darby. It's available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, uh, Kobo. Uh, also at Smashwords. And if you go to my website, mdarby.com, that's M, D as in David, A, R, B, Y, dot com, there's a link there to all those places, and you can read some excerpts as well. Yep, and I'll have links in the show notes as well, and I'll be putting out tweets about this book, uh, uh, and I will make sure I uh, send you some quotes as well, Mark, because uh, I think this was an excellent look at uh, a historical um sighting of nurses and nursing care right um and 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 the great interpretation of what possibly occurred uh during that time great well thank you jamie thanks it's been a pleasure to be on your show